Alright, in this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to solve the square one. This is my first actual video for a very long time. And I hope to get back to that. Uh, I'm going to try to make my next video a 5x5 five five tutorial. But uh, I'm not sure how long from now that's going to be. So, we can actually go on this point, hopefully. And I'm going to show you the basics first, how it works. Now, there are two different types of sides here. You can see these ones where it's split up in a bunch of different squares and rectangles four of those and then there's the top and bottom which are split uh, into really weird triangles and other bizarre shapes so it's a pretty crazy looking puzzle and I'm sure at this point you have already scribbled yours and that's why you're watching this video so my cube is set up exactly like a Rubik's cube I'm not sure if you can tell but white is opposite yellow blue is opposite green orange opposite red and it's all set up exactly the same because that's just the way my stickers came it was actually a do-it-yourself cube and I put the stickers on uh, so it was exactly the Rubik's otherwise it would be a little more confusing yours is most likely different this one actually isn't a real square one it says MF8 right there not sure what that means but it works exactly the same way I learned from the square one tutorial and I'm just going to teach you what I learned and my method is not an a really optimal solution. I mean, of course, it's not exactly an optimal solution, but it's a pretty long method. It's a beginner's method. Um, and you start by pairing the edges. From there, you can turn it into a cube. After you get it into a cube, you just work away at it using. Uh, you only need two algorithms for this, which is sort of nice. If you want to learn the much faster version, uh, you would have had to memorize like 40 or something, and I didn't do that. Some of the other tutorials on YouTube for this thing really stink. I got like into part three or four of this one tutorial, only to have them to tell me to go to some website uh, where you can learn the rest, and that doesn't even make sense. Why would you do that? So I went to this website, and they had tons and tons of algorithms and different ways to solve it that I dig through, and they didn't even tell you how the algorithms worked in the first place. Yeah, the notation for this is very different because you can't just say you like you can't Rubik's cube because you have to turn it tiny bit sometimes like that so uh, right now if you haven't scrambled your cube you can do that and it actually takes a very long time to scramble it's one of those puzzles that's really tedious to mess up so you'll notice that the center ring has this one slice here and then a solid on the other part and what you need to do is line that slice up with whatever you want to turn like this we'll do this right here and make sure you've got a line up there and it should go all the way around your cube because otherwise, uh, if you try to turn it, it could jam a cube or something, it could really mess it up. So let's do that, and then just give it a twist. And in all these pictures, you see the cube twisted like this because it looks really neat, but you don't actually do that. That's a half turn, you turn all the way. That's like, I can't even think of an example at the moment, but it's, it's just like turning a cube like this or something, side like that, leaving it there. You don't do that. Um, okay, so just keep twisting it, mess your cube up as much as you can. Like I said, what we're going to do here is pair the edges, and this involves logic. There's no real technique to this. I just messed around and figured it out on my own because the tutorial I watched was not very helpful at all. He just said, okay, now you pair the edges. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Just get your edges. You can either pair them, which is what I do, and then you get them in a one big curve, or you can just skip straight to the curve. It's much easier if you get them paired. Trust me. Uh, another thing you need to know about this, each little slice here is 30 degrees and this big one here is 60. Not too important, but just nice to know. Uh, now what you do is you basically just mess around until you get the edges to line up. I know that's probably not as helpful as any, you know, just as helpful as any other tutorial, but 
it's all logic here. So right now I've got this edge, and if I turn it twice, or one regular turn in this case, this edge should, should end up down here next to those three. And there you have it, three all bunched up there. Uh, now I've already got a pair here, and you can say I've got a pair here. These two are really annoying to get next to each other. Now I've got these two on the top here. And what I can do is I'll line it up so I've got this one here. Now if I were to, let's see, I can bring it over here. I'll have to split this pair up in the process. I'm just showing you this move. Uh, I could bring this edge all the way around and it would meet up back here. Like here's this edge. Keep your eye on it. And there it is up at the top. And this situation right here is actually very good to have. It's when you've got one here and one here. That's really annoying. Or one here and one here. Um, yeah, the situation is very good to have. You can even leave them like that if you want. Now on the bottom, uh, we've got another pair like that. So that's good. When you've got two pairs like that, which you usually do, what you do is you get them on opposite sides. You get this pair here, down here, you got the other one, and you twist it so that they line up. Okay? Uh, now you basically got all the pairs and like I said you get used to different situations it's all logic like I said very hard to explain this part just mess around with it and you'll get it eventually come up with your own strategy maybe now what you do this is the fun easy part group them all together what I'm gonna do here is um, let's see I'll bring this group to the, ed to the front and notice since 30 30 plus 30 is 60 this angle is equal to these makes it much easier to work with. I'm going to bring this down next to this other curve here. Like that. Now we've got 180 degree curve. Because there's currently like six edges there. Six times three is 180. Alright, now let's bring this one around. Make sure it's opposite the other. See how it's on the other half? There's that line going all the way around. There we go. Look at that curve. It's pretty crazy looking. Uh, that's the first step, and when I was first solving this, that step could take me up to like 10 minutes. It was ridiculous. Now this next part is sort of fun, and it's actually not going to be very fun from here on out. Uh, yep, need to break it to you. So let's get this edge right here. Got that line going down the middle. Got the nice little star on the bottom. Looks like Star David almost. Get it lined up. Split it. Now we've got two crazy looking shapes. They're both the same though. What you can do here, line them up and split it again. Got that. Exactly the same. Line going down the middle. Twist. Now you've got these two shapes, and there's actually a bunch of names for all the shapes, but I didn't bother to learn that. These ones you're not going to line up like you do with the others. You can turn it like this. But the center slice, see how it's all crazy looking right now? Uh, it's sort of hard to see, but this is not straight up. Now, um, we want that to be straight. What we're going to do is put them like this, so that they are even on the top and bottom. The reason you don't do that when you want to make it into a cube is because if you twist it, it just stays the same. See, top and bottom are the same. But you have changed the middle layer. Right now, it's a cube. Or, yeah, it's a square. Now, it's not. If it's not a square, make it a square. If it's a square, good. Leave it there. Twist the top one so that it's sort of perpendicular to the bottom. You got that going one way, bottom going the other. Bring that around. And now you've got these two shapes here. Bring it around to the front. Bring that around here. Now you've got half a cube. There you go. You've got it into a cube. And yeah, that's pretty much the easiest, most fun part of solving this thing. After this, it's all going to be painstaking algorithms. Only two of them, but they are long. They are very long. Like, I think one of them is like 20 or 30 moves. Okay, right now we've got more logic. What you want to do is you want to get the top side. And red's my favorite color, so I do red first. Although it is much easier to do orange. If your cube is set up differently, I'm sure it will act entirely different. I'm just going to do red uh, because it always brings you into a certain situation you need to fix, and you need to learn to, how to fix that situation anyway sometimes you run into it when you're solving orange. So now I've got two red cores next to each other. And that's pretty easy to get. Let's pop that out right there. And what you do, this trick right here is very important uh, for solving this thing. And oh god, I'm running out of